Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Technique Thursday. Last week, we had used Distress Ink in our Bible page with the Bible page kit, and this week I wanted to use Distress Ink again, but I wanted a little bit of a different background, and I want the Distress Inks to move more on the page. So, what I'm going to do is put Gesso down but gesso with a twist. So this week, um, the Abundance Bible Page Kit just came out on Tuesday. So love this one. I love all this corn and, you know, onions and carrots and squashes. And I just get so excited about it. So I picked a chapter in Jude, Jude 1, 2. May God give you more and more mercy, peace, and love. So when we talk about God's abundance, it's not necessarily that he gives us lots of food or lots of clothes or lots of whatever, books, whatever we want to say. Sometimes those gifts are spiritual gifts. God gives us gifts of creativity and gifts of uh, worship and gifts of us being able to go out and spread his word and do his work. So... I just wanted to focus more on the spiritual gifts and God's abundance. So if you look, I'm working in my Inspire uh, large print Bible. And there is graphics on this page. So I'm going to do my page on this side. So I don't always do it exactly where the verse is, but I will reference to it. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to take some just clear gesso and I'm going to pour it in this little bowl that I have. Now in this little bowl, I'm going to take some Liquitex ink. So this is kind of like you could put paint in here, you could put um, pretty much anything you wanted in here to color the gesso. So it's clear gesso, but it's going to have a hint of this kind of mustardy yellow color. I'm not sure how much to put so I'm just going to take a little spatula and what I'm most wondering about is because this isn't white gesso it's clear when I add this color into it will it still be translucent so that's my question of the day so that's kind of a kind of a beigey kind of background which is not so bad because I do want to add some of that distress ink so I'm just going to put a few more bobs of color in here mix it up okay that looks that looks like more fun to me okay so let's take this little bowl and I'm going to just take my foam brush I guess we should put the Um, or cover down on here because oh goodness me if I didn't can you imagine what would happen so I did a few smudges on here so I thought you know what let's just do some on the page so what this is doing is it's staying translucent but with just a hint of color isn't this cool so it's another way to add color to your page. Let's say you only want to do the margin. Well, you can put a few drops of color into the clear gesso. If you use white, it's going to stay white with that color. But if you use the clear gesso, as we're seeing here, we're going to be able to still see the words. So that's why I'm just covering up a few of these words here so you can see how it's going to work. I think this is really fabulous. So I'm just going to kind of get rid of this. I have a ton of this left. So I may find just another page to go and do later on. So this, uh, the gesso I was using today is Tri Arts Clear Gesso. So, all right, we're going to, I'm trying to find my dryer and all this mess. So let's get this out. I have two dogs inside and one dog outside and my little Daisy is out there barking at a horse or something. 
And my boys are now crazy and they want to go outside, but they can't get outside because the door is closed. It was so weird. So here where we live, it's called We Live Under the Arch. So we get these Chinooks and Chinooks don't happen in many parts of the world, but they, it's a whole big scientific explanation of moisture going over the mountains and it can come down and give us these really warm temperatures. So when we left to Calgary, or left our house and went to Calgary, it was plus 15 and sunny, beautiful, warm. On our trip to Edmonton, oh my goodness, it was zero and snowing by the time we got to Edmonton. So craziness, total craziness. So again, I have my three colors from my last video, wild honey and spiced marmalade and mustard seeds. So I'm just gonna grab some of this and go into our page. And I will get rid of this. And you will see that with the gesso are, you will see that the distress inks move much better. And no, I'm not wearing the same shirt twice in a week. I actually am doing these videos almost back to back because as I was printing them off, I was like, oh my gosh, I really want to do that one or should I do this one? And I thought, you know what? Let's do both. So, so the pages are going to look very similar except you won't see the dots because we can go in and move this distressing around on top of the gesso. So we can go in, if we make a blob, we can do this and still move it around. So just getting more color on here. Would have been nice, I should have grabbed like a red. Red would have been fabulous on here. These are all pretty much so close to the same. So it would be fun. I'm just gonna open my drawer. It's really close to me, sorry. And see if I can find a little bit of a, maybe even like this, just a little darker orange still have my pads out here. This is called Rusty Hinge. So let's see what Rusty Hinge is going to do. I love to just try new things and I always have, I'm so brave when I get to do them with you ladies by my side. Oh yeah, that's going to add a, a deeper orange in. Oh, I like that. So I'm just going to come into a few places here and bring the orange in just a little deeper of a color I should have put that sheet back on here let's see this one has no circles we're just going to do this deep deep color in here and if we take it off the the clear gesso you're going to see that it's a little bit darker in color so I just want to do some of this around the edges. And you should start distressing off the page and move on to the page, except with the gesso, it's nice and blurry. So it's not, it's not gonna matter. All right, so let's keep this all straight here. Oh, this one goes here. This one goes here, and this one goes here. Okay, we're gonna move those off to the side. We are done our page. We don't really have to dry it, but we can. We can just set it down. And you will see with the gesso, of course, it's not going to go to this page. So we can still go back and color that page if we want. So here we go. All right. So I'm just going to take the page kit and I'm going to start with the words because I want to 
make sure I have room for the words first and then I will move on to the rest of it. And I cut this out again with a minus three so it cuts inside the lines. So if you don't like that black line, that's a way to get rid of it if you have a scan and cut. Okay. I know you girls have so many fall elements, but you know, I think it was Linda Lynn in the group. She's like, are we getting more fall elements? I'm like, girls, you've used those up already. But you know what? Fall is like my favorite time of year. So I'm all for doing more. Heck. All right. Well, let's move this one here, maybe. I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to kind of think, stick to the design that I had kind of started in when I was doing the page example. And this maybe behind in front. Maybe we'll just do it in front. I want to give this kind of like a 3D look. And that's why I kind of laid the corn on its side. Hank really wanted to cut this one out. And you know, I thought, well, I'll do two because I, once I start, you know, doing videos, I have to clean my desk. Okay. And cleaning this desk is a lot of work. So my idea was to clean my desk, but also be able to shoot a few videos. Cause then once I go get everything dirty again, yeah, you know, it's just, I tell you, it just gets too much. Okay. So maybe we'll, just going to put some corn down here. We could put some up there, I guess, or just lay it in the basket. Maybe grab some onions and carrots, all good fall yumminess, right? All this good stuff from the garden. I'm so excited about my garden. I'm already planning next year's garden. My hubby's going, we're planning next year's garden already. And I'm like, well, of course we are because we have to get ready. And there's actually specially special gardening books for this area called Gardening Under the Arch. So it tells you about how these warm winds come in and how it affects your gardening and your trees because I mean in the winter in the summer it's awesome but in the winter if it gets too warm then things think they need to start growing again and you can ultimately kill your plants so you have to know how to protect these things so I am learning and learning and learning so here we go easy stuff right just so much fun. Maybe one more little leaf over here. And uh, another fast and easy page. But, you know, we, we got to do it sometimes. And this hand eventually will heal. So, but again, I always want to just come in on a Thursday and say hi to everybody. So thank you all so much for joining me. Have a beautiful day. And let's see your pages. Come and share and show us what you're doing in our Facebook group, Praise and Pray. So until next week, everyone have an awesome week. And I will see you in Praise and Pray. God bless.